To start my journey, I had to make my way to Oban, a small coastal town on the outskirts of Scotland. But by the time we got there, the weather had taken a turn for the worst. And this was a problem because in order to get to where the basking sharks were, we had to take a ferry. And the ferry that we would be taking tomorrow, the day of the basking sharks, had been cancelled today. So we were all hoping that the weather would clear up by tomorrow, or else we wouldn't even be able to get over there. In this weather. The waves are super high, even in the pier. Well, anyway, fingers crossed, tomorrow they don't cancel and it's not as rainy or windy, hopefully. So, with nothing better to do, we just spent the rest of the day in Oban and hoped for better weather tomorrow. And while I was running here, I was thinking, I should turn back, I should turn back. This is not. Even if I make it to the ferry, do I want to be on the ferry? Five past six in the morning. Well, I'm knackered. This is the day of the basking sharks. Quickly scoff some breakfast, then get the ferry. Half six, I only got a few hours sleep. And then I'm gonna be in the North Sea swimming with basking sharks. And luckily the weather had gotten better. So with luck on our side, we boarded the ferry and began our journey towards Col. It would take roughly around three and a half hours to get there cruising through a little channel that would protect us from the high seas and eventually lead us to Col. Here we are on the um, on the ferry to Col. Then we're going to be picked up by Basking Sharks Scotland, um, and then we're going to be taken out on another hour and a half trip. We've got a 75% chance to see Basking Sharks. If we don't see Basking Sharks, this title of the video would be very different. Hopefully, the sun should get out by the time we get over to the where the Basking Sharks sh should be, uh, and this is going to be very interesting. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Some amazing views, and you can kind of see off in the distance. The mountains sort of fade off like a, a beautiful Bob Ross painting. Jumping in the North Sea. Oh, it's gonna be cold. Oh. Once we'd arrived in Col and met the locals, we met up with a member of Oceana. I worked with them previously when I'd went to Florida to do shark tagging and diving. This is a charity organization with one goal in mind, to protect the world's oceans. So before we headed out on the boat to find these endangered species, I thought I'd take this opportunity to find out more about basking sharks. Oh, and also, I am completely unprofessional. Super. Yeah, that's great, is it? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> uh, is there any, anything that uh, you can... Facts or uh, sure. things I should be aware yeah. of? Yeah, so first off, basking sharks are really big. So this is the second largest species of shark in the world. In the, the th it's relatively unknown, I find. <laughs> really? people, especially in England, people are like, oh, we don't have any sharks. Oh. And we got the second biggest one. Yes, <laughs> no, and in, in UK waters, there are about 40 species of sharks, but mm -hmm. this, this is the biggest one here. The second biggest species of shark, the second biggest species of fish, in the well, world. Yeah. I suppose yeah, <laughs> they, put it like that, yeah. It can grow up to 12 meters long, about one and a half times the length of a London double-decker bus. And this is a seriously big animal. Even just the mouth can be a meter wide. So they cruise along with their mouth open, straining tiny animals, zooplankton, from the water. Just to stop and think about how an animal can get to be such a huge yeah, size yeah, when it's eating things. such tiny, tiny food is amazing. They apparently filter about two million liters of water per hour, which is enough yeah. water to fill an Olympic swimming pool. And basking sharks, unfortunately, like many other shark species, are threatened. Right, so okay. they're considered to be threatened with extinction around the world and in the Northeast Atlantic, they're listed as endangered. Oh, really? And this is for, is for two main reasons. So for centuries, they've been fished. They were, mm. they were fished for their livers as the main thing because oh. they have a really big liver that's filled with oil. And that oil oh, has been okay. used for lamp fuel, yeah, for tanning leather. Another thing that has contributed to the basking sharks being threatened is their biology, because they're right. slow growing, they yeah, don't reproduce yeah, until they're nice. relatively old. It can take a very, very long time for the population to recover. Hearing about all these negative things that have been affecting the basking shark, like how long it takes to get to maturity, taking a long time to jumpstart the population increase, and the general fishing that's been going on, really opened my eyes to an issue I didn't know too much about. But it wasn't all doom and gloom though. 
Canada. One really cool thing about being here, because this is one of the real hotspots in the to world, it's one of the few places in the world that you can go to where you're really likely to see basking sharks yeah. because they congregate here. This area, the Sea of the Hebrides, mm -hmm. has just been proposed by the Scottish government for protection oh, to, right. oh, to create fantastic. what's called a marine protected area here, basically the equivalent of like a national park yes. on land. And the, the Scottish government has just proposed it and hopefully by the end of the year we'll see whether or not that's going to happen. But the, one of the main reasons why they want to protect these waters are because they're so important for the basking shark yeah. and also for minke whales. Uh, I think I could go around in the UK and ask, what, do you know what a basking shark is? And I don't think mm. people would, would know. Or, it is, or even if they did know, know it was in, in this water. It's something that I think we need to be proudful of it because it's it's the second biggest shark in the world and yes. yet we have it here. No, no, I mean, there. it's a huge and really impressive animal. It and, is. And it's, it's here massive. in UK waters mm -hmm. and it's been heavily affected by human activities yes. for a few hundred years at least. And, you know, hopefully, hopefully we'll see it start to recover. But no, people, people should be aware that it's, yeah. that it's out there in the same way that a huge mammal yeah, land, living land on land in, in the UK. Equipped with the knowledge I just learned from Alison Perry, I was even more excited to find these basking sharks. So there was only one thing left to do, and that was to get on the boat and go and find them. We set off from a small pier on Col and made our way down the west coast of the island. Even though we'd came to see basking sharks, there was a few dolphins that popped up, unfortunately I don't think I caught those on camera, and a shag bird, which is a species of bird that dives down to catch fish. Whilst on the way we learned even more about the basking sharks, how they feed, and even just the huge scale at which they could grow to, and all the other creatures that we might be able to see, like minke whales and orcas. The plan was to go to a shore down the west coast of the island so that everyone could get used to snorkeling for those that hadn't been before and for people like myself who'd only ever done it once before could get used to it again. We were about to get into freezing cold waters where we needed to wear 7mm thick wetsuits which without you could die of hypothermia within 10 to 15 minutes. But before that we were approaching a hot spot for basking sharks. Everyone was keeping a close eye on the water and then somebody spotted something. It was quite far. It was quite far away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was, it was definitely staying there. Yeah, right in front of this. Right in front. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Couldn't be close. Yeah, yeah. Just you. Yeah, that's a basket. Oh, it's went under. Wait, so there's two of them. There's two of them. They're following each other. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, guys, you see this bit there? Not just one, but two basking sharks were really close to the boat. Oh, there's one all the way in the distance. All the way, there's the third one. And before we knew it, there were four basking sharks all around the boat. Wow. This is when they said if anybody felt confident enough, they could get in now and swim with the basking sharks, as this might be the only time you see them. They were also feeding, which meant that they weren't paying any attention to the boat, as basking sharks actually aren't that intelligent, and when they're eating, they're just thinking about eating. So with that, I, uh, I got ready to get in the water. <laughs> And this is where it got tricky because the boat had to line up where it thought the basking shots were gonna go. Close enough for us to jump in, swim to it, and for it to sail past us. This took a lot of time and patience. But once it was lined up, we were told to jump in. All right, guys. The water was surprisingly cloudy, filled with all that zooplankton that the basking sharks were feeding on. And then in the distance, a giant shadow appeared and then vanished. If I was going to get a close-up look at these colossal sharks, we were going to have to do it again. And this time, the shark came a lot closer.
but we still weren't satisfied. By the time it took us to get out the water, turn the boat around and line up another basking shark, there was only one left. And the basking sharks we had seen weren't feeding, which meant they were very aware of their surroundings. If we wanted to see a basking shark one more time, this could be our last chance. What an amazing experience it was. That basking shark came so close, you could see the barnacles on the back of it. After this, we ended up spending five hours trying to search for more basking sharks, but didn't find any. So we were left to enjoy the delights of Scotland. Amazing Scottish weather. I had such an amazing time on this trip. A big shout out to Basking Shark Scotland, F Gull for inviting me, and of course Oceana. Due to their partnership with F Gull, this was made possible. And thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it somewhat entertaining. I've tried my best to uh, edit it in a way that um, sort of reflects something you might see on TV, maybe. <laughs> but if you enjoyed this video, leave a like, and until next time, I'll see you later. Bye bye.